How are you going to welcome in the new year after a baby loss? With 2020 and all the challenges that it has brought due to the pandemic and many other national and world events that have created much uncertainty, some of us probably just want to forget about 2020 and look ahead to 2021. Mm -hmm. How do we as parents of pregnancy and infant loss ring in the new year without our baby? Stick around. Today, we're going to share with you six tips on how to enter the new year after baby loss. Let's get started. So between Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then New Year's, shortly thereafter, there are a lot of things going on in our lives in the last few months of every year. So once the family holidays are exhausted, our lives seem to begin to settle down just enough for reflecting on the past year and how we feel about that. Mm -hmm. So your life was forever changed from experiencing the death of your baby. How you choose to reflect on the past year and look onward to the next year will naturally take into account your loss. Mm -hmm. It just will, whether we realize it consciously or not. So more likely than not, there are three possible ways uh, that Tony and I feel like that you may be feeling when reflecting upon the past year Mm -hmm. and even looking forward to the next year to come. So one of those um, thought processes and reflecting is that 2020 has been hard. I can't wait for 2020 just to be over and done with. So moving on and moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, The second um, scenario or situation that you may feel uh, you find yourself in is that 2020 has been hard. I can't bear the thought of moving into 2021 without my baby. And that's got to be extremely difficult. And the third one that we uh, thought of was that 2020 has been hard, but there's also good things uh, that have happened too. So I'm hopeful for what 2020, uh, 2021 may or may not bring. So obviously in, in those um, processes of, of reflecting and looking back on the year, um, there are a lot of different emotions that are also involved uh, in that thought process. And um, I mean, realistically, it could be as simple as you're ready to put the past behind you, move on to a fresh new start. Um, you're looking for a new beginning, uh, maybe hope. Uh, a clean slate or or dreading the new year, you know, another year of grief, another year of loss, and just not being able to separate, lot, you know, this year uh, going into next year, uh, a fear of moving forward without your baby, essentially. So you mm-hmm. feel stuck, I would uh, imagine, mm-hmm. uh, or not even sure how you feel, period, right? It's that sense of numbness, maybe, and just not knowing where, where you belong in the situation, um, and it just nothing's making sense. So you're basically living day to day, going through these motions, getting up, eating, going to bed and waking up the next day and doing it again. Mm -hmm. And you're essentially just trying to survive, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And you may find yourself in one of those buckets or a combination of those three Mm -hmm. buckets. So regardless of where you're at in this journey, Tony and I wanted to provide for you guys. Uh, We know Christmas isn't even here yet, but we're already thinking about 2021. Mm -hmm. And so we want to provide you guys with six tips uh, to help you navigate into the next year. Mm -hmm. So be sure to stick around for those six tips coming up right after this. All right. For this week's spotlight, we want to share with you a book that is written by our friend Amy Lance. We've shared um, some books with you um, that she's written before. And this one is called Our Only Time. Um, These are um, strategies for medical professionals um, for, sorry, Our Only Time, Stories of Pregnancy and Infant Loss with Strategies for Health Professionals. Um, This is an amazing book and it's actually, each chapter is written by a bereaved mother who shares her own personal experience about how a medical professional whether it be a doctor's or a nurse or um, her experience at the hospital or maybe with a midwife, um, how they experienced a positive moment with them that impacted them greatly. And um, and so these are firsthand account stories. Um, so these stories are put together in a book in an effort to provide those that are professionals in the labor and delivery or NICU or perinatal hospice, anyone that's involved with um, delivering babies and bringing, helping them, bringing them into the world um, to equip them on how to best support families going through loss. So this is 
an amazing book. It's definitely a must read for anybody who is a medical professional or midwife or doula, um, as well as NICU as well. And just anyone that wants to better learn how to better provide support to bereaved families. Uh, we are going to put the link in the description below so you can go check it out. And a side note, um, I myself wrote a chapter about our experience with our hospital and their child life, um, NICU child life, and what they did for us. And mm -hmm. so if you want to hear our story, we are in that book. So again, the title is called Our Only Time, Stories of Pregnancy and Infant Loss with Strategies for Health Professionals, and it's by our friend Amy Lanz. Okay, so now on to the six tips on how to look ahead to the new year after baby loss. So first tip number one, remember you are not alone. This is where it takes a little bit of um, time and thought. You can create your own safe space. Think about the people that you trust and that are your safe people. Get them close to you and make sure that they're, you, you know, you've got them on your phone um, or maybe you can meet with them in person, hopefully, mm -hmm. um, or text or video chat. Make sure that they're nearby so that you can reach them when you need. Mm -hmm. um, number two, do something you enjoy. When it comes to New Year's Eve, maybe a big gathering is not necessarily what you're looking for. Look for what you looks you know appealing to you. Maybe it's just watching a movie at home or enjoying the day, going for a walk or a hike. Um, maybe it's a family night um, and maybe do some games and stuff. Whatever it is appealing to you, we encourage you to, do, to take some time to do that. And tip number three, thankfulness and hopefulness. Write down five things you are thankful for, for from 2020. I know if we look back, probably can think of all the hard negative things that have happened, but there's got to be some good things, even if it's small, mm -hmm. um, that you are thankful for. And I encourage you to write them down. And then write five things that you are hopeful for for 2021. And I'm not necessarily talking about New Year's resolutions necessarily. I'm talking about long-term um, things that are um, hopeful, something that maybe you would like to see in your life, maybe some um, changes that you would like to see, um, and just just look something to look forward in in the future. Perfect. Yep. Uh, tip number four: we have accepting help. So being open to accepting or even seeking additional help um, or support specifically. So. Uh, accepting help can obviously help us to see and move forward. Sometimes we have that mental block um, mm -hmm. or even an emotional block, right? Mm -hmm. To where it's just too overwhelming. I know that's happened uh, to me. That's why I can talk about that. Mm -hmm. But it'll help you with daily tasks uh, or even seeking mental health support. Um, obviously, we would recommend you seek a doctor um, first. And, and obviously, however, your medical provider is able to help with a referral or just go direct. I mean, that's ideal. Mm -hmm. So a support group too. So, and we've always emphasized this, um, in previous episodes. So whether you've heard this or not, we, we emphasize local before going, you know, to the internet, mm -hmm. um, for someone, a support group is not local because in person, obviously COVID is an exception to the rule, but look, there's something different. Uh, there's something more intimate about a local uh, nonprofit that specializes in pregnancy and infant loss. If you have that in your area, we would always recommend that first, whether it's online or in person, because they're local. They mm -hmm. understand your city. They understand your county. They understand your state. Right. Uh, you know, uh, with the COVID uh, is a perfect example. You can mm -hmm. talk about things that um, matter to you and also matter to them because they live in the same area. Mm -hmm. uh, the fifth tip that we have out of these six uh, tips is purely giving back. Mm -hmm. So and that can look different for everyone. It's a wonderful way to honor the life of your baby, uh, but it also uh, doesn't have to be these grand gestures, right? Mm -hmm. It's as simple as a food bank needing cans mm -hmm. and you go to your pantry, you've got extra. So you're giving it away or you go, you know, create a Walmart order, go pick it up and then take it straight to the pantry mm -hmm. um, for that church or for that Salvation Army, that nonprofit food bank, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Um, in addition, we we're thinking too, that, um, you know, if it's not going to be a grand gesture, you know, and we're going to keep it small, uh, it's still impactful. Yes, um, definitely. so obviously if there's an, if there's a nonprofit specifically, um, with pregnancy and infant loss or pregnancies in general, mm -hmm. for us, we have local nonprofits that we would know of, or we can deliver diapers. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and although that seems like a direct sting to not having our baby, there is mm -hmm. something there is something healing and, and um, cathartic mm -hmm. uh, about that process of giving to someone else who does have a living baby. Yes. Um, 
So that would be something meaningful, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I couldn't, I didn't get to keep my baby, but I want to help support moms who do have babies Mm -hmm. is is essentially what we mean. Mm -hmm. And the sixth sixth and final tip (laughs) is to remember what we can control. Mm -hmm. Uh, Out of all the chaos of COVID-19, out of all the chaos of daily life without COVID, um, there is the sense of uh, control that's always at the core of it. Uh, And so we just have to simply remember what we can control And we also have to accept at the same time what we cannot. Mm -hmm. And obviously we have to make a choice. What we're going to focus on versus what we have to let go for the moment, for the meantime, for however long it's a healthy situation to let those things that you cannot control um, be while you focus on what you can control. And then hopefully you'll be able to come back to those things that you couldn't control before and maybe that situation uh, has changed. Mm -hmm. But in essence, we're saying that we have a choice um, on how we respond Mm -hmm. uh, to our situation, good, bad, or otherwise. We always have a choice. Um, And we need to make good choices, whatever that looks like for yourself, uh, that's going to benefit us and uh, our health mentally and physically. So before you really act on something, there's some four basic principles um, that we just find to be just basic common sense, but sometimes we need to hear it. We need to hear the common sense to realize that, oh yeah, that is true. Mm -hmm. uh, And that is the way uh, that makes it easier for me. So there's four different ways that you can, um, you can look at situations and ask yourself, do I need to act on this or should I put it aside for now and just let it be? Mm -hmm. It's what we can control versus what we can't. So one, is it true? Mm -hmm. So we have to take the negativity, the falsehood, and just push that aside and focus on what is true. Mm -hmm. Number two is, is it helpful? Mm -hmm. Is it going to benefit me to respond to that situation or to act Mm -hmm. on that situation? The third thing is, is it necessary? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And the fourth and final is, is it kind? Mm -hmm. So obviously that is a a direct response to someone who's essentially said or done something Mm -hmm. towards us. Um, but it's very applicable Mm -hmm. to your situation um, in that case. So comments, suggestions, you guys, if you have uh, questions about today's topic, uh, if you have comments, you want to talk about today's topic, do that down below the video. Tony and I do the best we can to respond to all those uh, and definitely engage with you guys um, as much as you want to engage with us. That's what we're here for. And also, if you guys are getting value out of uh, our episodes, specifically this one, give it a thumbs up of course. Uh, And if you like our channel, uh, go ahead and subscribe to it. And you guys will get alerts when you ring that bell every week when we release content, um, which is these weekly podcasts, as well as our grief series specials. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So we wanted to highlight a really neat uh, website. We talked about it. I believe it was in last week's episode, but Mm -hmm. if you missed it, there's a really neat website that is not specific to pregnancy and if it lost, but it is specific to grief, which Mm -hmm. is Great. All types of grief. Exactly. All types of grief. So uh, it is it is called whatsyourgrief.com. Mm-hmm. And Tony and I just wanted to highlight that website again uh, this week. They did put out a specific uh, article, a blog article on their website, uh, about 64 individual tips for coping with grief at the holidays. Mm-hmm. So again, this is not a specific uh, grief for pregnancy and infant loss. But a lot of the 64 tips that, that we read over are extremely accurate mm-hmm. uh, and applicable because we're all grieving mm-hmm. um, in, in different for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just wanted to highlight that today. And we'll put the link in the description below to um, the article. Yes, absolutely. Well, with our six tips, which is creating a safe space, do something you enjoy, looking for thankfulness and hope, accepting help giving back, and remembering what we can control. All of these things can help enter the new year, entering the new year feel less daunting for those that feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Others may look forward to it with eagerness. Wherever you are at, it's okay to be right where you're at. And remember, it won't last forever as each day may feel different and that is okay too. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we want you to know you are not alone. You are loved. Your baby will always be cherished. Definitely. And we also want to let you know, a quick announcement, we are taking the next two weeks 
uh, to be offline as far as YouTube episodes go. Um, mm-hmm. We'll probably still be on social media, Instagram, Facebook, at Our Little Sparrows. You can find mm-hmm. us if you haven't connected with us already. Uh, but we will not be doing episodes for a couple weeks as we pr- prepare for the new year and also have family time mm-hmm. uh, during Christmas and, uh, and before New Year's. Yeah. Perfect. So with that said, if you guys got value out of this episode today and want to look at uh, our previous uh, weekly podcast, you can click or tap on the image above. If you want to go a little bit deeper, we do have uh, our first initial uh, completed grief series Mm -hmm. called The Pregnancy Journey, uh, Grieving from Diagnosis to the Loss of Your Baby and Beyond. We definitely recommend you check that out if you're currently pregnant and, uh, and in that situation. Click or tap on the image below. Thank you for joining us and have a gentle Christmas and Happy New Year.